everybody. So in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to turn a uh, scan into a full model. But this time, we're going to show you how to make a model with drain holes that hollow. So you can see in this case, we've scanned this model, uh, which has been prepared. You'll see in a few of the videos um, that we're going to take straight into this icon here, the Medit Model Builder. You can see there's a whole range of different apps. The Model Builder is, though, one of the most popular and it's an excellent app. So I've already done this before, so I'm going to click Cancel because we're going to do a new project. Now, when you first load it up, we've got to select the Maxilla and the Mandible. And you can see all the files in the directory here. So we need to select the lower jaw, pop it into the Mandible there by clicking the arrow to pop it across. We're going to select the upper jaw and select it across to pop it into the Maxilla there. Once we've done that, we'll click Confirm. Now, we'll automatically bring you to this stage here with an overview. Now, the Model Builder software is pretty straightforward because it's a series of linked workflow steps. So all we need to do, and I'm just going to bring this so we've got it full screen here. Um, we can go to that icon and go to attachments to bring in scans. So you don't necessarily need to have a, a Medit scanner, although obviously that works the best because it's seamless. But if you have a different scanner, you can still use this model builder by bringing it in as an attachment in that icon there. And when you click this first stage, we, it's going to automatically select for you. Um, but what we want to do, you can see it's not selecting too much of the gingiva simply because we it, it wants to minimize the amount of overlap we can expand that selection by dragging over and increase a little bit more of the gingival coverage we don't want to increase that too much because it's going to increase the height of the model which would then in turn increase the print uh, print um, uh, duration and also you know take more resin but in the case like this, we've got this extension on the arch here that we're going to need to add to. So I'm just going to click, click, click and select over this area. And if you've got a trackpad, just keep in mind when we're left clicking over everything, you want to just tap your two fingers right at the end to select it or I'll ideally use a mouse. So we've selected over that little bit of a dentulous area uh, that we wanted to include. I want to extend it a little bit more. So I'm selecting over things again. That's it, double tap, and there we have a little bit more. I'm going to extend a little bit more on the lingual surface here. And a few taps. To just cover that little bit more coverage that I want to do in that specific area. Now, obviously, we've got other tools at the bottom so you could inverse it, deselect. We're not going to go through that, but you could use the brush. We can invert it. We can swap it around and select, you know, the um, uh, to deselect areas if we want to, but we're not going to do that for now. We're just going to go straight to the next workflow step. Now, this next workflow step, you can see it means pretty self explanatory the edit 3D data stage where we can trim that 3D data to make things a little bit flatter over what it selected. Um, I'm not going to bother with it because we've selected it pretty nicely. And we're going to the alignment stage. Now, the alignment stage is easy as pie. You can see I'm just clicking three separate points and it'll automatically pretty much perfectly align. I'm going to hold down the right click to just align that arch into these little uh, alignment um, positioning uh, aids on the right hand side so that we get the arch in the correct occlusal plane and with the midline correct. Once that's done, next stage, base creation. Now you can see I've already gone through this, so the settings are already there, but that center option here at the bottom, we're going to have that on, so it's hollow, and you can see there instead of it being solid, it's hollow now, and this icon, I'm going to select create drain holes, and you can see we've now got these circles which are around the side. You can increase the size of them, and you can increase the distance from the base as to where those drain holes are going to be. Obviously, we don't increase it too much because it's going to then impact on whatever extension of the impression that it's creating as the actual model. Click that preview button and it'll give us the eventual model. We could drag those arrows before we did that to make it a shorter model if we want to. But 
other, automatically that's created a really nice, simple to use, easy model. And those drain holes are there. Everything's pretty much created as self-supporting. And we can then, if we want to, add a die on the next stage here. So we're going to click on, we're going to turn off the lower. So we go just to the upper where there's this prep. And if we want to create a die here on that upper left five prep, then when we click plus, we select the tooth, click confirm, and then just select around the margin. Now you'll see here, it's a little bit like Exacad. It's going to give us a cross section so we can select that margin tool. Okay. Now, obviously for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to spend ages clicking around, but you can see I can click to that point on the outermost point of that prep where the margin line is and try and just you know get through this for the sake of this video uh, as quickly as possible and once you've made this this margin line then we can actually go back to points if we need to say like there where you see here it's just a little bit off i'm not worried about it once we've gone round it's going to take me to that um so i can just adjust things a little bit I can drag those points, I can add new points, but otherwise, I'm pretty happy with that, okay? So once we've selected that area, uh, then we can add new points if we want to. I'm just gonna go onto the next tool, and it'll automatically ditch around it with the settings that we've got for that point. And obviously, spend a little bit more time if you wanna tweak that for your printer with the creation of the die. And now it's asking me to remove overlapping areas. Obviously, if we're going to create supports, then those supports need to support the model on the top and the bottom in that exact position. So we need to remove any overlapping data. Otherwise, those two models won't sit correctly together. So I'll remove the opposing arch because we're going to have the upper uh, with the prep. Now you can see automatically it gives us three uh, different uh, articulation pins. Now, for me personally, I spend a little bit more time on my interiors. So I like to add an extra one. And you can see when it's orange, that means that that support pin isn't in a correct position. It has to turn blue. Uh, very similar, like I said, as, as the Exacad stuff, we have to move those articulation pins to the correct point for it automatically to snap and turn to the correct color. You can see when I hover those over the drain holes, it doesn't like that and it wants me to move them. So we can position these wherever we want. Like I said, that for me, I prefer four simply so I can see the anteriors. I can see everything in the middle line, especially if I've got anterior preps. But for whatever the case you're doing, you, you might be doing posterior, in which case you leave it at three and have it in the center. Easiest pie, we're on the next stage and we're just going to add a label. Now, it automatically adds a label to each one of the models in each opposing arch. I'm just going to type into that, drag it, and pop it into the middle. The second one, I'm going to click those that text again, double click over the text, and then type in whatever I want. In fact, do you know what? Let's get rid of that one. So we've already got IDDA. Let's put joinscanclub.co.uk at the bottom one. Now, I'm putting that on purpose, not just obviously to flag that up, but um, it's a long name. And you can see when we've got drain holes, you have to keep in mind that that text won't fit between those holes. So where do we put it? We can put it on the extension there. Um, we can put it wherever you want. And we can also change it uh, to not only uh, embossed, but we can have it so that it's ditched in. Um, sometimes when it's ditched in like then, the orange uh, flag on one of the text uh, means that we have to reposition it slightly, but otherwise that's it done. We'll click the tick at the end of the workflow It'll create the labels. It'll create the articulation pins with the correct um, attachment between them. I'm going to save it. And it's already saved once because I've run through this before. So that's okay. And you can see it generates it here. And we can see that that is all good. Now I'm going to zoom in so you can see the effect of the two different types of either embossing it or carving it into the model at the bottom. So you can see at the top it's embossed. So it's sticking out from the model and at the bottom it's carved in there. So it's um, within the, uh, the actual model itself. Uh, me personally, I actually prefer it carved in. And the reason why is because it seems to be more reliable for printing. 
uh, depending on the printer, obviously. And that's about it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that and catch up in the next one. We've got a few really cool ones on Medit. Chat soon.